Super Mario Bros. Peach's Adventure. It is a normal difficulty ROM hack with 61 exits. It looks very appealing from the screenshots that I saw from Super Mario Bros. Central. My first impressions with the custom visuals for the title screen and the uh, very upbeat music, it just gets me hyped, man. They definitely put a lot of effort to the design of the Super Mario World title screen, as in showing off their own character design for Peach, which is awesome. Enough rambling, let's begin! As we start the game, we find Peach presumably fainted and Toad stumbles upon a Peach lying face down on the floor. Toad then takes her into his house. Peach, wake up! So after hearing my obnoxious voice acting, Peach wakes up. Now I will proceed to read normally so you don't have to hear my annoying Toad voice acting. Mm, hello Toad, w what's going on? I found you passed outside my house and brought you inside until you felt better! Oh my, well thank you Toad, I appreciate your help very much. Gosh, I'd better start heading back to the castle. There must be people looking for me. Thank you again Toad. Oh, I'm sure Toadsworth has already called the Mario Brothers. Not far from my house is a pipe that'll take you to your castle. Alright. Hindsight 2020, finding Peach passed out and Toad not questioning why she got knocked out is a bit odd. But whatever, that's the Mario verse for you. I love that little cutscene section though. Instead of the generic standing in place and being told what to do like, HI! SAVE THE PRINCESS! Seeing a new way to learn what your objective is was very fun. It was a brilliant demonstration of your custom sprite work of Peach and Toad. As for the tutorial, it goes in depth on mechanics that the game will use in-game and then some normal mechanics that casual Super Mario World players don't know, so that is awesome. Not many hacks do that. I also personally love the save at will mechanic, but I do dislike the I should get all dragon coins or how the game says star coins. Depending on the use of the coins within the ROM hack will determine my feeling for them. As someone who knows that if they are pushing that in a ROM hack, that either means to collect star coins to unlock more of the game later on, to purchase power-ups or entrances within your playthrough, or worst case scenarios and the most common Nothing, just bragging rights. Whatever it is, I just dislike being told to collect them all because I feel obligated to and depending on how difficult it is to gather them all will contribute to my eagerness on the collectathon. Done well or not, I will always hate it, just a little less if executed correctly. 1-1, one, one. Mario is missing. The level begins with branching paths, one that seems to hint you should come back at a later time and the other path that the game wants you to take for now. Going through the level, I find the fire flower I got to say. I love the black and red dress design for Fire Peach's dress. Why, you may be asking? I don't know. I just like black and red. <laughs> Before I begin the actual level, let me say I will begin each level from this point forward with saying what enemies you will encounter within the level when I begin said level. I am saying that right now, since the beginning of this still feels like story to me. I will also end each level with where the star coins are located since the creator was adamant that they are important to collect. Sorry for the mid-level interjection, let's proceed. The enemies in this level will consist of normal Goombas, Green Koopas, Monty Moles, Piranha Plants, and Jumping Piranha Plants. Oh dear, what's this? Mario's head has been left behind and his house is in shambles. What happened? Peach worries greatly. Loving the cutscenes, also the house internally looks amazing. You call this shambles, Peach? Wait, that is adorable! I love the portrait so freaking much. Sadly, the house had nothing in it besides a love letter from King Koopa. Also, in-game, I notice I basically have infinite time. The fireballs are also running on Super Mario Bros. 3 mechanics, meaning enemies don't drop coins when they get fireballed. And speaking of coins, I missed a star coin somewhere and I can't backtrack. So, I will have to redo the level and I have to locate the missing coin. I decided to jump off a cliff due to my disappointment and to also see if the star coins are running on dragon coin mechanics from Super Mario World. Sadly, they are, meaning halfway points will be my greatest enemies. While beating the level, I also noticed the coins continue past 100 coins, meaning coins have another use instead of 100 coins equals 1-up, so that is interesting. Also, also hitting on top of the flagpole gives you 50 coins. After I beat the level, I realize the game tells you if you've collected all the star coins within the level as well. Since I have failed at collecting all star coins in my first run, I must replay through the level, so the star coins are located at the front of the bottom path pipe which is hard to miss. 
above these two hills where it can be missed if you don't go out of your way to collect the blocks on the top of the hill, past the pipe that if you hastily enter immediately like past me did, you won't be able to go back because it proceeds to Mario's house, so that coin can be missed. You can also find one on top of Mario's house, which is hard to miss, in the path close to the end of this bridge that is above water, hard to miss as well. That is my replay and I do appreciate the level just going in depth with more detail that contributes to the story. 1-2 Super Cave Your cavernous enemies of this level will consist of normal Goombas, Green Koopas, Swoopers like the name implies, Piranha Plants and Bouncing Green Paracoopas. The level begins with you entering the cave in a slide format which is fun because I do love me some slides. Also, for a cave named Swooper Cave, the first enemy you see is, well, a Goomba. Literally, the fourth enemy you encounter will be the first Swooper, which after you kill him, you won't see anymore, which is odd for a cave named after its species. There's also this bonus room referencing Super Mario All-Stars Super Mario Bros. 1 bonuses where you see Peach's face, so that's neat. Then after the halfway point is where you finally locate some more Swoopers gonna be blunt about this level. It's a pretty straightforward level. The lack of swoopers makes me wonder why it's called Swoopers Cave. There's about 8 in total within the level and it's only past the halfway point where you see more making it seem like the creator realized, oh, I forgot the swoopers. Where after the halfway point, there were a lot more swoopers placed consecutively next to each other. But fun level nonetheless. The star coins in the level were located slightly ahead of the entrance of the cave in the question block section, hard to miss, above the big pipe barricaded by blocks meaning a mushroom is needed but still hard to miss, inside the second small pipe you see in this little bonus section, ahead of the halfway point past where the creator remembered the name of this cave in this little dip in the floor, also pretty hard to miss. Between these falling platforms which is also hard to miss but be careful you can easily die if you don't react accordingly. Also, at first I thought the blue meant double exit, I just realized blue levels just mean it was completed. 1-3 three, Treetop Trip For this platform heavy level, your enemies will consist of reskin normal Goombas, red Koopas, green Paracoopas that are flying to your left, charge and chucks, red Paracoopas that are flying vertically up and down, and green bouncing Paracoopas. Want to know what I just realized? The first three levels are following the Super Mario Bros. 1 level design of land, underground, and platforming. Another small reference, but I must say, this aerial level looks much better than the original Super Mario Bros. 1. The trees have more details and a more variety of enemies. Also, the Super Mario Bros. 1 remix is really good. Then we have this pipe that leads to the slide, which I freaking love for a bonus room. So cool! It is a very fun bonus level compared to the generic rooms we normally see. But, let me just say, taking that pipe punishes you hard. So let me start by saying without completing this level, your star coin locations are... One jump ahead from the very beginning of the level on this branch above, hard to miss. Slightly before the halfway point, it's in the way so it's pretty hard to miss. I had to backtrack to get it, but it is located past the slide bonus room pipe and ahead from the halfway point on the block where the platform is rotating from. Over the music no blocks section which are hovering above a pond, past the pipe you exit from when you come from the slide bonus room on a precise platforming section with a red paracoopa that flies vertically up and down. So yeah, taking that slide before the halfway points makes you skip a lot of the level which includes two of your star coins so that is my quick heads up to you. But me being an idiot who backtracked to gather the coins in one run, I get to go on the slide for round two! Woo! I love this! Sadly it's a trap! <laughs> After you exit the pipe and get past the red paracoopa, you will find the only section of the level that uses mushrooms for some reason. You take the pipe and it's pretty much done, pretty straightforward. <sighs> now to test my patience. 1-4 Blurp Lake Just like any other Super Mario water level, your enemies will consist of cheap cheeps that swim left, urchins that block your path, Lockatoos and spinies, you know, like your typical water level enemies, and of course, piranha plants! Level starts out from a pipe where you slowly traverse and avoid as many cheap cheeps as you can. With my lack of patience, swimming through this level frustrates me, but wanna know what makes it worst? 
These fuckers, not only am I slowly swimming through my watery hell avoiding as many enemies as I can, but I have to wait for these dickheads to freaking move! But whatever! Also, if you didn't know this mechanic in Super Mario World, this game actually explains the objects thrown at Urchin kills them, so that is cool for people who are still learning. Also, without me being biased on my hatred for these water levels, I do love how visually appealing the level is. Actually has a background, not just a blue background like in Super Mario Bros. 1. The creator also has the area decorated not only with your typical blocks, water flooring, and coral, like the normal games. The decoration also comes with custom terrain, castle pieces, or just flat out castles. Very visually appealing. Also speaking of castles, there is this sunken castle with a door that seems like you can enter it. After entering the door, it leads you outside for some reason. A sunken castle leading to the overworld is a bit odd. In this overland section that is in this castle that is immersed in water, you have to deal with this Lakitu that respawns pretty quickly. Avoiding spinies up until you make it to what looks like the end of the level, which live commentary me thought it was the ending. Is this the end? This is the end. Okay, backtrack time! I backtracked hoping to see what star coins I am missing, then realized I couldn't find a way to return to find the remaining star coins. So after I jump at the end and realize it was a fake... Oh wait, that was a fake? Okay, you're over here stressing me, creator, like how dare you? I must say, kudos to you, creator. That was funny. I love that so much. So after the fake flagpole and reacting to being trolled, I go back underwater, swim a little ahead, and you make it to the end. So, your star coins will be located at... The very beginning of the level past the first three cheap cheeps, you will see a dip of the flooring. It is very hard to miss. Next to the halfway point barricaded by blocks, you will need at least a mushroom, but it is also hard to miss. Take the sunken castle with the door which takes you outside somehow, and about halfway in the section you'll find a staircase with a small gap in it. Slightly ahead of that staircase which had the third star coin, you will see a section of breakable blocks over water and you will see the star coin located there. At the very end of the sunken castle land over the fake castle, Interesting water level, I must say, though. Doesn't mean I like the water levels, though. To Triangle Land! 1-5 Sunset Island Your enemies in this sunset-appealing island will be Red Koopas, Green Koopas, Paragoombas, Spinies without a Lagatu, Piranha Plants, Parachuting Goombas, and Normal Goombas. Starting this level, you will realize that this level only offers you some basic platforming and many, many enemies. No, really, that is all this level has. A very easy level, especially when you have a fire flower that makes the variety of enemies a joke since they die easily to the fire flower. I also found some tea! Maybe reference to Earthbound? Anyways, you want to know what makes this level hard? Let me tell you about these star locations. You can find them at the very beginning of the level on top of these blocks which are located over these two hills. It's a little bit out of your way. A little ahead of the first coin but barricaded with breakable blocks. You will need at least a Koopa shell to break through them this time. Meaning my first run I didn't do it because I went in a genocide spree. Die, die, die. This one is slightly behind the halfway point in this dip with a bridge, which is hard to miss if you don't take the bonus pipe that skips the majority of the level. <coughs> Past the parachuting Goomba section where there are two row of blocks, on the top row, third block from the left, you will find a block with a vine in it that leads you to the star coin. Over this buried castle which is located past this big pipe that if you hastily take, you can't go back. Yeah, the star coins were everywhere, and that is definitely what made this level difficult. 1F, Booming Airship. Now, for your Booming Airship, you will have to deal with Bullet Bill Shooters, Cannonball Shooters, Rocky Wrench, and your main man Boom Boom. On top of those enemies, you will need to deal with auto-scrolling. The level starts out not on a ship like the name implies, but on the ground. It is probably a rough reference to Super Mario Bros. 3 and the final levels in the world where Mario climbs into a ship. So I love the intention. Climbing the chain leads us into this booming airship where we realize it's an auto-scroller. Remember me complaining about waiting in Blurp Lake and swimming? Well, welcome to the sequel of my waiting purgatory. 
The level mainly consisted of a variety type of projectiles that I had to react accordingly and precisely as we waited for Mr. Scrolly to fucking scroll, had some platforming where after each jump I had enough time to take a breather, after we reached the end we see boom to the boom which of course it's an easy boss, I still somehow took damage from my cockiness though, was pretty much an airship level, yeah. Our star coins were also not very hard to miss, they are located, next to the entrance of the ship on top of the platform from the first chain you climb, slightly ahead of said chain above the second cannonball shooter, literally one jump ahead past the halfway point, one jump ahead of the third star coin, past the chain you climb here on top of these three platforms, so yeah, all of them are pretty straightforward and hard to miss. That consisted of Sunshine Plain, our World 1 from Super Mario Bros. Peach's Adventure. Subscribe to see me explore World 2. Catch me live on Twitch on the channel VT, and I will catch you guys next time I upload a video.